Hello and welcome to this edition of Serity Chat with me, Big Scott 35. Uh wanna just touch some things, how a hobby, how everything's going, goals, everything I like to talk about on Saturday, anything that comes to my mind. Uh so started this week, Sunday, great chat. Mike came on. Um just talking about, you know, hobbying, how the hobby that purchasing things, you know, how just to enjoy your uh, hobby, enjoy your collection. There's always other things to do, other things to look for, uh, creating lists for future. Uh, you know, there's always things to be doing, and it doesn't cost money to hobby, right? And it's still hobbying. Uh, then, uh, Wednesday showed off a few cards, you know, uh, Scott Reindeer Studios uh, had uh, uh, bought a couple of his, uh, one was Gary Carter. Um, then we had uh, got a couple other pickups. So another, I picked up another rookie, Gary Carter, which I don't know how many now I have uh, raw and graded. Uh, still need that Opeachy. Uh, one, I, I have one. It's just in bad shape um, for my book. I don't have one um, for uh, graded. Um, it's just something I'll be looking out for. And to get a decent one might cost me a little bit because they're just so in, in bad shape. Uh, you know, I don't mind a, I don't mind a, a good one. I just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'll talk, you know, if y'all watch me, you know I'm in the center. And they don't have to be perfectly centered. I just like all four sides. And that's tough to actually get in that 75 for Peachy. Um, it's tough to get into 75 tops for some reason. That was a terrible year for uh, quality control, if you want to call. I know it's just, to them, it's just baseball cards. They were just cutting them and sending them out packages. Uh, they, you know, nobody thought in 75 where we'd be at today and, and with this hobby um uh what is the uh and then that gets us really to today so you know i talked about wednesday uh how i collect like rookies and uh i, I touched on it i i like to have their first card bowman I, I would like to have their chrome but if i can't i get their paper just depends on pricing i'm not going to kill myself uh, whatever is the easiest one to get. I just like to have uh, one of them. I like to have the flagship uh, paper. Um, not, not a big Chrome fan for rookie cards. Don't really care about them unless, you know, I'll, I'll get to the butt. There's all, I tell you, there's always a butt to every system. Uh, and then, you know, I, I collect the living sets. Uh, if you're not familiar, let's see if I have one sitting over here i do it's in my stack to go out to be graded uh this is the tops.com living set if you're not familiar with it uh if it's a rookie uh that i uh, i i feel like i want to at least collect those i will pick those up and get it graded uh and put with the, the rookies so i like to have three different rookies and then last and uh this is not a definite, not something I search for. It's just if, it, if I come across and it's affordable, a autograph. And that can be in Panini. It can be whatever. Leaf. I, I just would like to have an autograph. I don't understand why autographs fluctuate prices so much. It's a person's autograph. It shouldn't matter what it's on. Um, it's their DNA that we're after. I don't understand if why the card makes it different. I can understand a little bit for a rookie card, uh, but after that, they're all the same. Um, I don't care what patch, what you put in there to make it pretty uh, or how pricey the card is or the name of the card. It's the autograph of that player that you're looking for. And that used to be the way it was. That changed really hard like 16 17 it used to be you know it didn't matter what you had it on i mean if you go look back at old beckett's and stuff it'll tell you how much an autograph for a person was 
didn't matter what it was on. That's what it was. Uh, at least that was a starting point, of course. Uh, you know, so that that's why I feel for that. And somebody asked me how long I've been doing that. Well, I, I got into the Bowman first cards probably around 15 or 16. Um, you know, they weren't very popular. I would pick them up because I was watching college baseball, especially the draft. I wouldn't maybe pick up the first one, uh, but I would get the draft Bowman um, because of the college players. Um, and because I really liked, I, I liked the actual, I was buying the pro, not pro debut. I did get the pro debuts and heritage minors because of the minor league teams. But the price is all just, even those went up a little bit. And uh, they, I would buy a box just to have a box. And I uh, thought they were just a fun, fun rip. Um, you know, uh, I really do. You know, I, that's why I really like the uh, Panini draft uh, cards because it had their college. They still do. It has their college uniforms. I really like those. Um, I know in the value world, not in the in collector's world, they're not looked upon favorably, and I don't care. Um, it's good for my wallet, uh, but it's... It's not something I really, really give two shits about. Um, you know, I don't care about how much something goes up. Of course, I want to have my... It's sad I got to reiterate this every time, but I feel like I have to because I'll have somebody question. Yes, I want my cards to have value. But it's not a necessity. I, I very rarely do I look at a card after I buy it to see how much it's gone up. I, I don't care. The um, only way I do is if I want to get an upgrade or, you know, you look at a card and you're something, once you see something that you don't like about it, you, you, that's all you see. Uh, I, right now, I don't, I'm not having that, but I've had that in the past. And it, to you, it's an upgrade to you. Um, it might not even be a different number grade or raw to, to uh you know whatever it's just a different card that looks better to you um that's about the only time when i start looking at how much a value is so i know what the hell i'm doing i'm purchasing you know like you know for me in, in the uh bowman's for you know uh roy campanella you know i gotta look at the value so i don't i have an idea of what money to have what to look for where my what the number uh, you know the the number that somebody chose to put on it, uh, where to kind of begin to look uh, for those things. So, the, you know, value has to have something. But for me, uh, you know, I, I, I really like the college uniforms. Um, I probably collect those. Uh, I, you know, I like the UVA. I, I try to get the UVA, the players in the Don Ross or the Panini for their Virginia uniforms, uh, they're light. They'll be licensed. Um, well, they have been. I don't know if what's happening now with the college licensings because of fanatics. Uh, but at, up at I know last year's uh, draft for had the Virginia logos on it because I picked up the Virginia guys and we're good. The Virginia's good in baseball, so we Virginia's always got people. That you drafted. Uh, so there's a couple right here. I try to get eight by tens of them. Uh, so uh, Boston has some top catcher prospect. The uh, A's uh, golf uh, came up. Not golf. Uh, yeah, came up this year. He's got a little brother um, in the organization that played for Virginia. It, it, you know, it's just. Uh, Paven for him and McCarthy for the Diamondbacks. There's pitchers sprinkled around. And not only players that play at UVA, players from Virginia, like uh, Devin Williams, really pitcher for the Brewers, you know, players like that. Uh, 
Justin Verlander played at ODU. Uh, he grew up 20 minutes from where I live, you know, Johnny O's. Uh, we, I can go back. Um, it, it's, it's fun. I, uh, Reynolds and the Upton brothers and David Wright. Uh, some of them played at UVA, uh, but the other ones played on a travel ball team down to the beach. So it, it's fun just collecting those for me and I'm learning the history and where they played and, um, you know, finding out how many of them played in, in my town because we had a, a, we got a nice baseball stadium there. Uh, so we do get quite a few tournaments come through there. Um, so, you know, a lot of the little league up to now we have a wooden bat league, which is uh, like a showcase college showcase team. Uh, now we got a team that's there. They're calling them the Junior Peppers, which they're kind of selling them as the bananas. So it, that's that's a fun thing. And then uh, which they're popping up because it, bananas. If it works, people are going to copycat it. So you know that type of thing. So I, I know I'm all over the place right now talking, but when it comes to rookies, that's where where I'm at. I'm back to rookies. Uh, so I've probably been doing this for seven years. I don't know how long the living set has been out when I added that to it. Uh, but I've always, like, got the flagship rookies for early 80s, you know, when I knew what, understood, had an understanding of what was going on. You know, uh, 80, probably 82, 84. Four is when I had a better understanding. So before that, I'm missing some key rookies. I'm missing some key rookies from the 70s, which are on my list. I'm missing the Ricky Henderson in 80 on my list. Uh, but I have like the Gwen, the, the uh, I, I guess the first real one that was on my radar as a kid was Cal Ripley, um, 82. Uh, just because he, that team, you know, was so good. He was so good. Uh, that that card, you know, was that that futures card was that was a big card. Then. And we, everybody in my neighborhood had one. We all wanted them. We had multiple ones. Everybody went to the Seven uh, Eleven or wherever packs were sold, looking on the cello packs to see if he was on the front or the back, or if you spread them out enough where you could see the names or the future logo, uh, future star, at, uh, when you spread them out, um, you know, that stuff's been going on. You know, we talk about people searching packs now. I mean, that was 1982. And uh, I remember his rack packs. These, these type of packs right here. I got a few right here. Um, you know, we would spread them out, look at the back, see who was on them. Uh, you know, you know, I got this one because of Gary Carter. Uh, actually, I got a very good one here um, that I picked up at the National. Shoot, I forget now how many years ago. Uh, but Gary Carter, Eddie Murray, and Ozzy Smith, 87. Um, yeah, Mike Flanning on the back, an Orioles fan. Greg Gross, Paul Molitor on the back. Um, so that would have been definitely one like in 87 old Scotty boy would have definitely been picking that one up and opening it. Uh, so that was the type of thing that me and my friends did 87. I was not cool anymore, uh, to do that. I still did it, but I was probably the only one in my neighborhood at that time. Um, so, you know, but anyway, that's, doesn't matter. That's near here, neither here nor there. Just thought I'd bring that up, but yeah, that's so rookies. I think like most people, um, you know, me and my friends were more for the all stars and the, the big names of the game. Um, and but you know, if it was a big Don Mattingly, Tony Gwynn, when those names came up, we 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 were looking, we were hunting for those. Uh, you know, I I remember you know. 
when it came up to Gary Carter, when he went to the Mets, I did not have the 85 trade until later in life. Um, but I had that 86 card. I, I, I was looking all over for it and, um, and I got her, you know, as soon as you know, I got it, uh, as soon as I could, I opened, I don't know how many packs and even after I got it, I wanted more. Um, so that's, that's just how it was with, with those type of things. And, uh, and it wasn't just the rookies, but as I got older, I a better understanding of what the rookie card and what it means to collections and to, you know, if you really like a player, that rookie card is kind of the uh, standout of the collection of that player and how important that card is. Uh, that's when I really started getting, making sure uh, that I was getting rookies. And I mean, I'm missing, I have holes in my 90s collection because even though I did buy, I didn't buy nearly, not, not even close. When I get paycheck, go to the store, pick up a few packs. Uh, when I went to 7-Eleven to buy adult beverages or whatever, I would pick up, they knew me as the pack guy. I would pick up a pack here and there, and that was about it. Um, so I always had one toe in, but I just couldn't be in the hobby. And to me, it wasn't being in a hobby. I was just collecting cards. Uh, I didn't have a community. Um, it was just me. And uh, and now come I find out a lot of my friends were doing the same thing. We just, nobody talked about it. And, uh, you know, so that that's that's it. And I was asked, you know, how long have a, has that been a plan of mine? Uh, and I thought that was a good question. It made me think, and it can't put a date on it, you know, this date, blah, blah, blah. But it's probably been six or seven years. And whenever Living Set started, uh, I started getting those because I really liked that set. Uh, I used to buy them all and I had to stop because it just, like like everything else, it didn't make sense uh, how I was collecting. So I'm having more fun getting the players that I like and love um, than getting just players that maybe, yeah, I like them, but they're not what I really wanted. It doesn't make my needle move when I, when I flip over that page in my book or something and they're in there. Um, feels like more of a hassle to put away cards uh, with those. So always trimming down right now with that. Now, moving on and talking about, you know, what is popular and not popular. Uh, Eric, those back pages made a, a, a statement on Twitter this week. They got our group having a great conversation on that. And, um, you know, and I invited him on for Sunday night for Eric and I to have more of a conversation on this topic. So I think it's a very good topic. Uh, and I, and I like made it as like hobby, you know, awareness, how people, you know, aware, uh, the awareness of players in the hobby why certain players are popular and why certain players are not. Uh, this came over um, the Skeens, Paul Skeens, because pitchers are notoriously not popular in baseball. They just don't, they're not sold or bought or whatever, looked at or as favorable as other position players. I feel the same way for catchers. Uh, pitchers are like, the punters of the NFL and catchers are like offensive linemen. You know, it's just uh, um, people know who they are. They, when they do well, you don't hear much about them, but when they do bad, they're, you hear a lot. Uh, so I think that's, that's kind of where it is with that. And, and we're going to talk more about that and not just schemes with other players in the past. While maybe they get pushed aside, why I like to, I like to hear his reasoning why we have different levels of players in the hall of fame, right? We have hall of famers that nobody talks about. Then we have hall of famers for whatever reason are the tippity toppity players. And what's the reasoning for that? 
Um, I, I feel like, you know, I, this is going to be a great conversation. Eric has been in this for a long time. Uh, if you, I'm, I'm sure everybody on here follows him. If you're following me, and uh, he hasn't been on my channel in a while. I know he's been he he's busy a lot, so I don't bother him too much. But I saw this and I was like, man, you know, why I was going to talk about it. If I'm going to talk about it, I might as well invite the person that made the uh, statement. Uh, and there's truth to the statement. Um, but I just want to get more background on the statement, right? Um, and I'll go over the statement tomorrow night and uh, we'll have a conversation. And please bring your questions, insights, and thoughts as always. As always, I, I love it when y'all do. I don't care. I, I love being pushed, I love being questioned. It makes it for a much more exciting hour um, or over. Um, can't promise an hour tomorrow night. Uh, you know, I don't know how long Eric will be on, but we might talk after. He might stay. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy to have him on and looking forward to the chat. A lot of good insight in, in, incitement into the hobby. Uh, and, and we have a lot of knowledge that are in the, in the side chat. So um, that's for damn sure. So please come tomorrow night. Questions, thoughts, and opinions. Uh, until then, like, share, tell a friend, and please, as always, subscribe if you haven't. And we will see you.